So, welcome back, everyone, to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan here. For today, we have on the show, I mean, what can I say? We have here two incredible, amazing, badass, incredible superstar people. We got here Daisha and we have Laura. How are you guys? Doing good. Doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, two incredible actresses, two incredible, super badass, talented actresses. And uh, we're going to have an incredible chat here. Now, before we start, I do want to thank those who are watching this or listening in on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Now, in the description below, you're going to find all of Laura and Daisha social media. Follow them both. Let's make them viral. Hashtag Team Laura. Hashtag Team Daisha. They're both incredible. And also, I'm going to leave in the description if you want to find out why they're badass. Also, you're going to find their interviews so you can be like, oh, I get it now. And um, yeah, without further more, let's jump in here. So for today's, you know, it's a total different activity, right? The main topic here is how you guys see the whole, you know, acting industry in the next five to ten years. Now, that being said, I will start. I will just start with the first question, which is with the rise of streaming platforms and on-demand content. Tell me, how do you foresee the future of traditional of traditional cinema over the next ten years? Who goes first? <laughs> Um, all right, I can I can kick us off, I guess. There you go. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of already, I think even just in the last few years, we've seen a lot of changes with the pandemic and stuff like that. So I don't know if I really have the exact answer for where I think that it's going, but I definitely think that, you know, we are going to see a lot more involvement with AI. I'm not sure entirely what that means. And as much as you know, I think a lot of us that are in these creative spaces, we do kind of want to push back and aren't necessarily ready to dive headfirst into that. I do think in some ways it's kind of inevitable and is going to be part of our world, but how much I don't really know. And in what ways we can, you know, try to make it so that we're still having more human interaction than just AI. I'm not sure, but I I do think, especially, you know, we've seen like that was a big reason for the SAG going on strike and the writer strike and everything. So I do think some parts of it is going to be involved, but I don't know to what extent. Uh, but that's definitely been something that's been on my mind and that I've been worried about and clocking for sure. So yeah, I can see that too. Because I find even, for example, Five Nights at Freddy's, this year, when they released it, they also released it on Peacock at the same time. So because they released it on a streaming service, the in terms of revenue at like in the theaters, it was a lot lower than it would typically be. And if that trend continues as well, I think there'll be a lot more stuff on streaming that then won't get enough money in terms of the box office too. So that is something you have to keep an eye out for too, I feel like in the future. Yeah. And one thing I watched too that was interesting, I'm blanking on what the movie was called but it was on Netflix and it was one of those choose your own um paths or whatever so the actual movie I I'm it, it's some rom-com I literally can't remember I'll have to find the name of it later and I'll let you guys know um mm -hmm. but basically like as you're watching let's say like 10 minutes in you can make like your first choice it's like would you um take this job or that job or would you talk to this person or wouldn't you talk to them and then based on what you choose chooses like the next scenes of the movie that you're gonna see um so that was definitely something that was interesting to kind of come to light and I think you know like like audiences are getting smarter and like they they want to have more involvement so maybe that's a certain way that kind of things might go in the future it almost feels a little bit like a video game um so I don't know how many more of those we'll see but I, I do think we'll see some more of them for sure mm -hmm. that's a good point I remember like reading the goosebumps growing up where it was like switch to the page to figure out what's going on here if you make a choice yeah kind of like that <laughs> now how you think advancements in technology like you know deep fake AI and a virtual reality will influence the acting profession in the future? Well, I think at least for the next three years, at least that'll be covered in terms of not happening or at least going out of their way in terms of union projects to not allow that to be a big factor. But then again, you see things all the time, like there's now AI to write songs. You give it some words, you give it a theme and they write it to a whole song where I think people are using things like that which then could go into when like all this is over with AI, people just kind of get used to it anyways, where it's happening behind the scenes. Yeah. And I think the first thing that we'll see uh, them kind of be more lenient on is 
with the background actors. I think eventually, I, I know there's been a couple projects where they have used AI and background and stuff like that. And definitely some, some of it you look at and it doesn't look human you you almost you can feel that element of okay there's a missing human component but I do think when it starts to seep in more I think that's where we'll see it first um is them creating like these background AI characters that we maybe don't even realize at first that they are um not real people but I think that's where they'll be most lenient Mm -hmm. yeah I agree it's like the walking dead for example and how they CGI and all the other zombies too but that's a little different because they're in so much makeup anyways compared to like actual people. But they've done that for years now too. Yeah. So we'll see, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, I do think that, yeah, I do think that, I mean, it's going to happen for sure. But people, I mean, perhaps an AI would be able to create something amazing at some point, you know, that might happen. But I do think that perhaps it works. But for the second or third time, people at some point are going to be questioning about it, you know? I mean, I do think, like, the beauty of the whole, you know, um, uh, writing, right, or acting is when you feel somehow related either to the story or to the character, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. if you know that it's been made by an, by an AI, even though that is really good, still is not going to connect the same, you know what I mean? I mean, we do need, like, connectivity, you know, like, relate, you know, to feel relatable to it. Mm-hmm. So it would be kind of difficult at some point people to feel relatable as an AI. I mean, who knows? But I do, th- I mean, I do, I'm positive, you know, and I'm I'm, I'm very optimistic that by the end of it, people are going to be like, okay, yeah, AI is cool and everything. Yeah, they can do great stuff, but we want the human side, you know? Yeah. We want those mistakes or we want those things because the ugliness it, yeah because it's what makes it interesting you know it's, it's what makes mm. it human let's say you know so and another big reason people watch so many projects is because oh I've I've loved this actor in whatever other movies I saw or things like that so it's hard to imagine people connecting that same way to AI in the sense of like wanting to follow them through their career when they're not really a person or like people are invested in their personal lives and they go to film festivals to see the actors, you know, Tiff, like a big thing, a reason a lot of people go to Tiff is to see the Q and A's and to see the actors walk the red carpet and stuff like that. Um, So it'll be interesting to see. I don't know if people would have that same investment for AI character. Do you call them characters or people? I don't really know, (laughs) but for AI, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And, with many actors, you know, transitioning to roles behind the camera, such as directors or even producers uh, sometimes too. Do you see this trend kind of intensifying in the future? Uh, I think you will, because I think when things get more competitive, there's so many people who want to act where you need to know more than just that sometimes. Otherwise, you kind of get stuck unless whatever you do acting is like unbelievable or you have a certain niche to it. I feel like producing or directing or knowing how to do script supervising that way when you're not booking work, you're still working and in the field that you enjoy too. So I think a lot of people are now taking on director roles because they're realizing they're not getting cast. So then they're making their own projects, which is always great. But I noticed that, especially in Vancouver, it's happening a lot. I just went to a festival on Tuesday and a lot of people were saying for this year's run and gun, their 48 hour fest, a bunch of them want to make their own projects because they want to have the opportunity to act, but also show people that they can do more than just that. So then they're easier to work with as well. Yeah. And I think a big thing with that too, is you may get jobs or you may get to do things here and there, but it might not be roles that you're really passionate about, or it might not be, you know, everybody has those like dream roles that they want to do or things like that. And it's really hard to not only get cast in those, but sometimes even just to find those, sometimes you find that that story's not written or it, it it doesn't exist or there's not something being offered in your area or whatever. So I think that's been a really nice thing to see with people creating their own work is that they're able to do things that they actually want to do and, and play characters that they're passionate about, which is really cool. And I think also with social media too, um, that's really driven up everybody's ability to just, you know, anybody can get an iPhone and record something and edit it themselves, right? So mm-hmm. it is really nice that it's a lot more accessible than it used to be, I think. Yeah, that's true. Can you think about how many influencers too who end up acting or mm-hmm. they try not to be as influencery, but they still do all the acting on like TikTok or whatever or YouTube? 
and they make their own shorts. Like there was Talk to Me. They were YouTubers who made that the Australian film. And that was super sick cool. to see that people just got a camera. They kind of did their thing and it went to Sundance. That's yeah, like that's an amazing example, right? And yeah, I, I think people want to do it more so than they ever did before, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, do you anticipate a shift in the type of stories and narratives that will be popular or prioritized in the next decade? Hmm. I feel like maybe to do with kind of recently they have been touching upon it in terms of just like being sucked to your phone or just being so ingrained in social media and just being online that that's probably going to continue being a trend. But I also feel like they might make more stories about what it's like to not have that as well. But it's so hard to tell right now, too, because with AI and everything, you don't know what's going to happen in the next five to 10 years where things could be like completely different, too, or something could happen where maybe we're not so stuck on our phones or whatever. So I think it just depends on what happens all around us to figure out what the trends are going to be. But most likely it'll have to do with some type of media. Yeah, I think we've also seen, too, in the last five years or so, a big push for diversity and um, mm-hmm. like different like in all aspects. So I think that already has really shifted it in a way that we haven't really seen before. Um, mm-hmm. So I think a lot of that will extend to in there's a lot of projects in development and stuff like that where we're going to see more of that. Um, yeah, I, I, I know it's, it's really a weird time right now with 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 the AI and also with the pandemic too a lot of things are still like finally just like kicking back up into full gear and one thing I'm not looking forward to is seeing stories eventually about COVID and the pandemic and when that's you know just commonly I'm not looking forward to that Uh, I feel we're a little bit too close to it still to want to watch that kind of stuff well people Um, were doing it during COVID too like there was like I think it was uh oh this is us or yes. anatomy, they had COVID stuff too. Yeah. And I think for the most part, most people felt, I, I guess even some shows on a show such as Grey's Anatomy, it seems to make <laughs> a little bit more sense because they are typically dealing with health stuff and, and real world events all at the same time. Like that's kind of always been the dynamic of the show, mm-hmm. but for some things, even you know, I don't know. There's just some things where I'm like, I don't want to talk about the pandemic yet. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get it a, a little bit further beyond and then we can circle back. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I don't know exactly where I expect it to go, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, how you think the role of film festivals will evolve, giving the increasing accessibility of digital platforms for, you know, showcasing new talent? I feel like you already see it because like, for example, like with the film that I'm planning on submitting to festivals, I can literally submit it to like Atlanta, Georgia, if I want to, or out in like Europe. And those opportunities are already there. Yes, there is some festivals that say they have like a certain area just for locals, just to keep it fair. So you're still getting people from that region into the festival, but they are allowing so much in terms of opportunity for people from abroad to submit, which is really nice. Yeah, uh, it, it is cool. It's cool to be able to connect with people wherever, right? And one thing that was interesting for me was I went to some TIFF events and saw some shows this year. And it was a weird TIFF to be at because all the last few years have been weird. We had, they did one TIFF where it was mostly online because of the pandemic. And then I think last, like not this year, but the the previous year was the first year where it kind of was actually back a little bit to normal but then this year the strike was going on right so a lot of the actors couldn't come to their premieres that normally would um they weren't able to promote their pro their projects in the same way so that was a little interesting to see and I think that's a big component at least for a lot of the bigger festivals I think that's a big component of why people go and and what makes them so interested in it um especially you know to hear the team talk after and 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 share stories about why they made it or um, I, I know in the film that I saw, I think it was called a uh, woman of the hour, but it was starring Anna Kendrick. And she basically had wrote a note saying like, I wanted to be there so bad to, to share. I've been working on this project forever, but unfortunately right now I can't share those details with you. Um, so it really does like remind me that the festivals really do kind of 
bring bring people closer into seeing what went behind the projects so we don't necessarily see when it okay it goes to theater or whatever um so I think that's something that we'll we'll really see the next few years start to come back more with the strike and everything and with the pandemic that people will be excited to to have everybody there in person for sure oh yeah as soon as everything's good just everyone yeah. <laughs> be nice <laughs> mm-hmm. all right now with mental health becoming a prominent discussion, do you see the industry adopting practices or policies to support actors and crews well being more effectively? I had hope so. But it's kind of hard to tell too, just because like you would want it to happen, but also they probably expect people to already have those measures in place if they're being on a professional set. But then again, with all the unions too, I know they, in terms of mental health, they try to keep an eye on it. Like for example, with auditions, if you get like auditions under 24 hours, you're not expected to have it memorized. And that I feel like is a big thing for mental health. Cause if you're stressed out and not sleeping, try to memorize like a seven page script for the next day, it's going to be really hard. So it's nice that they have some measures in place just to make sure we are being treated, treated right and respected too. So Going forward, they probably will have those measures measures in place, but also they probably do have an expectation that we keep an eye on things, which kind of sucks, but it's kind of what I do see a little bit too, especially as an actor. It's so competitive, whereas like if you can't be on set and bring a certain quality or whatever to set, they might just be like, okay, we'll find someone else you can, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying with that. I do think we're starting to see more rules and things being implemented to try Mm -hmm. to help with mental health. Like, for example, intimacy coordinators. That's a term that I don't even think a few years ago I really knew too much about. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's good to see that they're trying to introduce things like that to keep people comfortable and safe on set. But the reality is, too, there's... There, there are these rules and stuff in place, but they're not always followed or necessarily enforced. And I think as an actor, it unless you are a very established actor, I think it's hard to go against the grain because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do something that the not do something that the director wants you to do, but also you need to protect yourself. So it's a hard line to kind of follow. So I, I think that's the most difficult part is that as a society, we kind of we're like, yes, we want all these things and we're implementing them and we're putting them in place and actors setting out rules and stuff, but are they always being followed and enforced? Um, and if you do exercise your right to be a part of that, are you, you know, is that going to be seen as a positive or a negative thing sometimes? Yeah. And you that's don't want to be difficult thing. either. Exactly. Yeah. So that could, I think that's the real challenge right now. <laughs> all right. Now, how do you feel about the rise of short form content? You know, like what we see on TikTok, YouTube, you know. So do you think this will influence the type of content produced or even the length of film and shows in the future? I find films are becoming longer, actually. I think people have an expectation for short form content and how much story can be told in such little time. Like you look at a short film and when you go to write one, you realize how much you can actually incorporate in a certain amount of time and what will make sense and what will be rushed. So when you have like bigger projects that fully explain something, if the story is good, people will watch and that will kind of help with the attention span too. But I think even TV shows, it used to be like 20 minute run times and now most things are becoming 40 minutes or even all the big shows are becoming an hour for certain episodes because the writers and everyone realize people want to see the story really fleshed out. So I feel like that'll continue. But yes, of course, some will be kind of shortened too. People just don't have the time. Yeah, I I think the short form content is great. Honestly, I don't think that it competes or takes away from traditional or long form content. I think all it does is really, for the most part, help it. You know, most people use TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that to promote whatever projects that they're working on. Uh, also, a lot of people now, myself included, we have short attention spans, right? I think about how often if I've been on TikTok or Instagram or whatever, like I'm scrolling through fast or if a video is boring me, like I'm skipping to the next thing, right? Um, so I think with short form, it's really hard to grasp people's attention and keep them uh, interested because there is just so much of it. I mm-hmm. think that's the the challenge, but I, I don't think it competes with the the long format at all. I think I, I think actually like it helps some people might 
recognize or notice somebody from an Instagram thing that they posted or something they post on TikTok and that'll lead them to maybe watching their show or whatever it is. So I, I think it helps it actually. That's a good point. Cause like there's times where I'll see like edits on TikTok. Like for example, with Five Nights at Freddy's, everyone's just talking about Josh Hutcherson. And then I'll see these films he was in, like these little snippets or clips. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that looks good. Then you go and watch it. Which like a lot of my camera roll screenshots of TikToks where it says like the name of the film. And I'm like, I'm watching that later. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I've done that. There you go. Yeah, I do think there is basically space for everyone. You know, I, I, I also don't think that either the short or the length will be compromised at some point. I do think mm-hmm. that there's just, I mean, sometimes you really want to see, I don't know, a two, three hour film. And sometimes you just want to see a one minute video. You know, I do. Yeah. I think that is like something that um will not be, yeah, will not be, um, yeah, like one will affect the other. You know, I think there's space for everyone. So, mm-hmm. All right. Now, do you anticipate any shifts in how actors are trained or educated for their careers in the future? I think a business aspect will become more prominent in terms of the training because a lot of traditional training doesn't have any business side of things or very little where I think actors are realizing they have to brand themselves and then that can be confusing. So to have the branding and business incorporated earlier on, will save them a lot of time later. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I also think too, now it's really important to be be good in uh the like the zoom space and mm-hmm. um the self tape of doing it a lot more of uh, of the expectation is put on you to do it yourself meaning there's not as many in person auditions and things like that so there really is a demand for you to kind of be able to not only just do the acting but to be able to do all the technical side of it as well so i think there's been a big push for that and mm-hmm. i don't really see that going anywhere to be honest uh, I think casting and production companies and stuff like that have realized that they can save a lot of money by doing castings virtually and doing self tapes and they save time. So I don't see, you know, money and time. If they can save those, I don't see them going back to in-person unless it's, you know, as we get towards the final stages, like for chemistry reads and stuff like that. But I, I think that's all here to stay. And I think a new actor starting out, that's going to be one of the most important things that they need to learn right off the bat is how to act in those spaces and not just in person um, which is unfortunate but (laughs) so where we're at right now well and also like callbacks aren't happening anymore too like in Vancouver especially like a lot of things are getting booked off tape so that's creating a lot more of not in the room or even just not dealing with zoom either but I do find a big push for zoom classes like I've taken zoom classes all summer for auditions and it's so helpful because you don't realize how much you have to pay attention to like the screen and how you have to like push yourself a lot more to connect with the actor and it's a lot so it's good to be aware of what you need to do those auditions and do them well yeah and before 2020 if you told me to take a zoom acting class I would have said never (laughs) there's no way like I'd be like that's horrible like I'm not gonna be able to do it like there's no way and now it's almost essential right so Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to see how fast it's changed too And as global politics and social issues become, you know, like more intertwined with entertainment, do you see actors taking on more activist roles in the future? I think so. Like, I think in some ways we've we've seen already that come to light. Right. Um, Jane Fonda is a good example of that when I'm when I'm thinking about actors who are also activists, Um, I think as. Uh, I think a lot of actors, once they kind of uh, make their make their way into the industry, then they kind of realize, okay, like what's next? Like what else do I want to do and how else do I want to make an impact and and how can I be involved? And I think when they realize that they do have, you know, a bit a bit of a following or people that are paying attention to them, there's a lot of actors that want to use that for a good reason, right? So I think that kind of gives them the power to then still go for things that they were already passionate about, but be able to voice that and make more of an an impact, um, which is cool to see. But I, I definitely think, you know, even as a society, we're a lot less afraid to to speak up and, and share our opinions and things like that. So I definitely, I, I see that continuing. Like, I don't see that going anywhere. Yeah, that's a good point. But also something to consider too is, how much cancel culture has become like predominant recently too. So a lot of celebrities or actors may feel scared to speak out 
because then it, let's say their demographics very split down the middle of people who like believe in certain things, they could lose half their following or they lose a big chunk of the people that support them. So sometimes they'd be careful of what they say, which makes sense when they have like their like PR teams and everything, everyone just to like make sure they stay on track too, where it's good and great if they are able to communicate and spread awareness, but also they'd be careful at the same time, depending on the cause. Yeah. And sometimes even if you say nothing at all, then you're still canceled. People are like, well, why don't you speak up on this? So yeah, you just can't really win. No, never. (laughs) There you go. Oh, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right. So how do you think the role and importance of, uh, of critiques and film critiques will change in the digital area where basically everyone can be a reviewer right now? Well, you start to think who's qualified and then you realize if any everyone has an opi- opinion, then the I guess the reviews aren't going to be exactly the same and maybe not as fair either. They'll be like, yes, like with critics, there's more bias because they have a certain amount of knowledge or there's a reason why they're in those spots. But if anyone can do it, then I guess a lot of reviews could tank a film just based on someone's opinion when they don't have much knowledge about that thing, too. Yeah, I I think for me personally, I try not to get too caught up into uh, reviews or critiques or things like that. I kind of more like to watch what I'm interested in and then form an opinion for myself. Um, But yeah, I I personally don't pay too, too much attention to those. And I I think, yeah, I I think just as an actor, too, I'm not really that concerned with I I don't know. I don't I don't really want to know. I want to just focus on what I'm interested in. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't, then whatever. Um, but yeah, and I also think too, sometimes the, you know, it's, it's like, I think something we learned in elementary school, but like, if you don't have anything nice to say, like, you don't need to say anything at all. Like people, they, a lot of people, they pour their hearts and souls into these projects and money and time and tons of effort and things like that. And, you know, if they're proud of it and they're happy with it, then they should just put it out there. Right. I, 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 like, I, I understand why, critics exist and stuff like that but I think for the for the most part for me it it just brings a lot of negativity so I'm Mm -hmm. I'm okay without it to be honest fair I mean I barely look either I find like when you do you it's like when you're on like TikTok for example and you look at the comments and you see people saying like just really just mean things yeah it's like if you like it and people around you like it too like that you trust and you actually know then great but if it's like random people just saying things just to say it it's not worth your time Mm mm-hmm yeah, it's important. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It's, you know, I used to, there was a time in which I was like seeing like a lot of reviews, you know, for films, things like that. But then later on, I didn't, I stopped to kind of enjoy them because, you know, they're basically like some of them will have agendas to it, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's when I, that's what I started to be like, I mean, it's not fair because, for example, they released this film, but it turns out that the, that the ones who are making this review had a problem with a director some time ago, then that film, it's going to be, then you know that for them, that film is going to be total crap, for example, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I do think that is important that if you love something, go for it, enjoy it, and, you know, don't pay attention on the, on the, on the negative side, which is going to be always there, but yeah. you can't please everyone, you know, so... That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, my last question here, so we can all enjoy, you know, after a couple of hard questions here, super mm-hmm. easy going. Tell me, what do you think that would be the best title for this episode? Ooh. I'm trying to think. I was trying to think of ideas before because I know you always ask this question. <laughs> yep. Um. I never have a good answer either. <laughs> I guess like manifesting major changes or like the water under the bridge as in like the strike or no, not the water, the light under the bridge, kind of like the strikes over things are in a good place. Let's hope it stays that way. I like that. I would listen to that. The light under the bridge. I like yeah. it. Okay. The light under the bridge. Yeah. Sure. Cool. We have a title then. Perfect. Fantastic. I mean, I did. What can I say, guys? I mean, it's incredible what you guys do. I love the fact that you keep doing it, and I love the fact that you are just enjoying it. You know that you are actually, yeah, you are showing everyone here 
that dreams are possible and i think that is the most beautiful thing that you that that and, I, and i'm super sure that somehow you get the chance without you even know that you inspire people you know because you are showing us that 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 at the end of the day it is possible you know and especially right now in this time which you know a lot of negative stuff happened and a lot of you know crazy things are happening in the world the fact that we can relate in uh, in actors people like you who are yeah besides creating cool cool stuff the message between the lines is mm -hmm. you can do it too you know and that is an incredible thing so that's I badass agree. the positivity is coming the strikes mm -hmm. uh, to an end so yeah. it's got to be up from here right <laughs> absolutely absolutely i do want to thank uh, also those who uh, you know check this episode thank you so much on the description below as i said at the beginning you're gonna find all of uh, laura in the asia social media follow them both make them viral they deserve it they're super cool and badass and um yeah and again guys thank you so much for making this happen keep rocking keep killing it and uh, i'll see you in the next one